Hurricanes are violent forces of nature, and we're used to describing their power in terms of wind speed. To qualify as even the lowest strength hurricane, a category one, the system must contain sustained winds of at least 74 miles per hour. But this scale can be deceiving, leading many to believe that a mere tropical storm without hurricane winds is nothing to worry about. Tropical Storm Allison tragically shattered that myth. Tropical Storm Allison in 2001 wasn't very significant from a meteorologist standpoint. It never became a hurricane, but it had a huge impact both in Texas and other states because of the massive rain it dumped. Allison spun up very close to the Texas coast and moved north of Houston, dumped about five inches of rain there. Then overnight, it made a U-turn and came back over the city and dumped 37 inches of rain. This area is very flat, and so when you get three feet of rainfall, the water's generally about three feet deep. Some of Houston, Texas's most valuable downtown real estate is in low-lying areas subject to flooding including the celebrated Baylor College of Medicine. We have a large research facility here uh, based primarily on mice and rats. We had a census of well over 100,000 mice. We also had a breast cancer researcher with 25 years worth of breast tumor samples. Baylor is really known as a research intensive medical school. Houston residents are used to rain, but by Friday, June 8th, they realized that Allison might be worse than the usual storm. There was more and more street flooding and people were getting stranded. And you could actually just walk out on your front porch and watch the water rising in the street. In a suburb near flood-prone Cypress Creek, Chris Black and his wife Shelly were horrified to see rising water headed straight for their door. And about midnight or 12.30 a.m., it started coming in the house. Water coming under the door. They quickly decided Shelly should take the kids and head for higher ground. And I told my wife, go get a hotel and stay with the dogs and the kids and air conditioning and electricity, and I'll stay here and watch the house. And we loaded up in our van, and we were driving toward the front of the neighborhood where there's another dip in the road. The water was coming up onto the hood of the van. I'm calling my husband, and I'm panicking really badly. And I'm almost screaming, saying, we're, gonna, we're not going to make it out. We're not going to make it out. Shelly struggled to get to high ground winding up at a truck stop parking lot. She and her kids were trapped, and the water continued to rise. I was on the phone with my husband telling him, we're going to die, we're going to drown, what do I do? And then the, the cell phone coverage went out. All I heard was, we're in the van, the water's rising, it's halfway up the wheels, what have you done? And then the phone died. I literally sat with my head in my hands for about 15 minutes going, what have I done? Most of the people that died during Allison were in their vehicles. Many of the cars were, were swept off the road by the, the running water. Allison just buried the city in water. The Interstate uh, 10 was basically a river. On Saturday morning, Claire Bassett was awakened by a phone call from the Baylor College of Medicine with some very bad news. They said that our animal facility had water coming in and the water was rising. So when I got here, we had one floor totally submerged in water and another floor that was partially submerged in water. We did fortunately have an animal care attendant who was here, and he was able to get all of our large animals out of the facility using a little small pin flashlight. I can remember him coming up to me in the hall and saying, is it all right that I put a cow in the ladies' room? The smaller animals did not fare as well. We lost about 30,000 of those research mice. A research mouse can start out as just a simple research mouse and then you can breed multiple generations, so you can have a mouse that can re represent five or 10 years of research experience. Even worse, in the sub-basement, the freezer containing the breast tumor samples was submerged and the samples floating in the water. 
Probably the most devastating loss was a breast tumor bank of 25 years. There were some that the researcher was able to salvage, some that he had shared with other people, and he started rebuilding his tumor bank again. Baylor would eventually tally financial losses at close to half a billion dollars, but the personal losses were impossible to measure. At his own home, Chris Black agonized over how much he might have lost. Finally, he was able to get a cell signal and contact Shelley. The service was still very spotty, so we got the essentials out. The, you know, I'm okay, the kids are okay, we've got a hotel, when can you come out? But Chris couldn't come out. He was still marooned. And we're still underwater. The sun came up. I looked outside, the water was light brown, inside it was dark brown. And it was about four and a half feet in the house. Reassured of his family's safety, Chris was able to find the humor in his own rescue. They came with a, uh, an airboat, and they docked at my second story window. I never in my life thought that I would dock a boat on the front of my house. Chris was lucky. His wife and children were alive, and his house could be repaired. Elsewhere, 23 Texans were dead, 30,000 left homeless by the storm. But Allison's deadly rampage wasn't over. slowly started moving to the east and started causing a lot of rain in Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, and elsewhere in the southeast U.S. On June 11, Tropical Storm Allison reached Tallahassee, Florida, dumping 10 inches of rain. Elizabeth Rowland, a student at Florida State University, wasn't concerned. Just part of life in Florida. When the hurricanes get up to a category three or four, that's when you really start paying attention. Around 10 p.m., the rain had stopped. Elizabeth and her boyfriend, Michael Pacin, decided to take his car and go out for ice cream. It seemed like the water was going down. They saw a police cruiser on the side of the road and asked the officer if the road ahead was safe. He pretty much said, just use extreme caution. And so to us, that meant it's OK to go. They drove down a hill toward the dark water. Suddenly, the car was afloat. Water only a foot deep, if it's moving quickly, can sweep a car or a truck right off the road. Borne by the violent current, the vehicle was headed right toward a storm drain and sinking fast. I jumped out, and he jumped out at the same time. I didn't even touch the bottom. I was getting pulled into the storm drain along with the car, and then I look over, and I see my boyfriend. And the last thing he said to me was, are you OK? And I couldn't even reply, because immediately afterward, I was pulled under. That's when I got pulled through the drain tunnel, and I pretty much knew that I was going to die. And I came up in a room where I was able to get some air. A grate was right over her head. I immediately grabbed onto the side of the wall and just yelled for help. Amazingly, passersby heard her. Citizens heard the woman in there screaming but couldn't get to her. One of them, Santos Izquierdo, lifted the grate and reached toward her. No time to think. It is somebody life in risk. Officers and some deputy sheriffs responded, and um, they had a rope with a uh, some kind of flotation device hooked to it. We were able to get to the woman. She grabbed on, and they pulled her out. I owe, I owe these, these people everything. Elizabeth's boyfriend, however, wasn't nearly as fortunate. His body was found the next day, two miles away. Years after the tragedy, Elizabeth hopes others will learn from her experience and avoid driving through water. It's a lot more dangerous than it appears, and it's, it's best to just stay inside until it really, it's really over. Allison was responsible for seven more deaths in Florida and 41 dead overall, becoming the first tropical storm to have its name retired, a fate usually reserved for severe hurricanes. So overall, the flooding cost about $5 billion of damage, all from a tropical storm. Allison wreaked her worst on areas near the coast, just as hurricanes usually do.